Uh, I'm so thankful for the, for the ministries we have in our community. But church, I'm very excited uh, to also introduce a ministry that we love and hold close to our hearts in prayer, and that is Teen Challenge. And would you guys uh, give them a hand as they come up this time? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, the sound people's right on because I'm on. And that's hot. I like that. Psalm 135 says, Praise the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. Thanksgiving time should be a time of ringing forth praises for uh, what God has done for us. The, the Teen Challenge ministry has been so, so out front and out there since 1958. I probably don't have near the time I would have or would need to go into the details of how one little preacher in Pennsylvania heard about a bunch of kids that was in trouble in New York felt God leading him to go into a courtroom where a very violent crime was being tried and he was ejected from the courtroom and that ejection put his picture on the front page of the New York papers and it introduced him to a whole, whole lot of gang members that welcomed him into their life, into their world. And he found out he had a lot of things in common with some drug addicts because we're all sinners saved by grace. Amen. David Wilkerson started a ministry on the streets of Manhattan in Brooklyn, Harlem, that would now today spread into 125 countries. Started out with the name Teen Challenge. You see the name on that sign there and that particular facility is located in the Johanna community on Highway 701. Around here, we got this way of saying things. In Georgetown, they would say, going up next to Conway. The ones in Conway say, Go, going up next to Georgetown. That facility represents a place where men, and we also have facilities for women, can go and spend a year of their life set apart I tell the guys sometimes they talk about a year. I said, Paul had to spend three years. <laughs> so they have 14 weeks of Bible, basic Bible classes and then contract readings and assignments that they do. Our men are involved. I think the next picture would probably be the offices where our headquarters are there in, in the Ohana. The next picture would be their dormitory, I believe, where they sleep. They get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. They get ready for their daily activities, their devotion, their classes and meals. And by 10 o'clock at night, it's lights out. Isn't it, guys? Preacher might show up and bust you. You don't want that to happen. We emphasize the spiritual life in Christ. For without a relationship with Christ, we would go nowhere. But with a relationship with Christ, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. We can be made overcomers. And if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in us, he will quicken this mortal body and make us alive again. Our mind is renewed by the washing of the word. Good stuff in, good thinking patterns, good behavior, things change. And then our Bible also teaches us that if you don't work, you don't eat. Now, we don't have that kind of discipline program in place, but how many knows you got to put out if you're going to get something? That's just one of the principles in God's Word. And we travel as missionaries. Now, I don't know if these guys understand that they are missionaries. They probably look at me and identify me as the pastor, and I'm the missionary, and I'm the one that's been doing this since 1990 in the Myrtle Beach, Conway, Georgetown area. But I've traveled, I'm like Johnny Cash on that one. I've been everywhere, man. I don't have to have a GPS anymore. I told somebody GPS calls me to see if there's any updates. 
That's a joke, okay? <laughs> but what I want to do is I want to introduce you to a group of our guys. When they come to us for a year, they know that they're going to be se basically separated from society, and they get to get out of the classroom. They get to get off campus. They get to leave the farm. So I'm going to ask them to join me up here, and they're getting ready to sing, and I'm going to kind of set this up. Now, the sound booth, they're ready for the music whenever I give them the cue, but we're going to go and do, anybody like bluegrass? That's right, I'm in Macedonia. Okay. <laughs> okay, how many's got a Kleenex or a white hanky or a piece of paper or something that you can wave? Because we, we're, this, if I, okay, I'm a preacher that, I hate electronic leashes, so I'm free tonight. I can run. Uh, we've got a song that we picked up a few months ago by the Triumph Quartet called The White Flag, and I kind of like to think about us being millennials. Now, not all of us. I can look at the great, the salt and pepper out there and tell we're not all millennials. But they understand this term called interactive. Like with the computers, you interact. Well, we're, we want you to interact with us. So you get your little white flag, and when the cue comes out, and you'll hear it with these guys, we want you to sing with us and wave your flag, and we're going to have a good time. Or is that against the rules in your church, Chris? You can have a good time. All right. Take it away, sound booth. Sinner man, don't you know you can't win? Well, if you keep on walking down the road to hell, one day you're gonna walk right in. Well, you're tired of listening to the devil's lies, he's burning you down so low. Soon you'll find out that a sinner's life is a mighty hard road to hold. Why don't you just wave that old white flag of surrender? Come down to the altar, let God save your no. soul today. Cause you run from the Lord, sit so far back, you can't remember. Let him ease your troubled mind and wash your sins away. Hey, hey. See you staring at the preacher's face. His words just calm your fears. Well, and there you go. You're running down the aisle about to be born again. Pretty soon you'll use that old white flag to preach to your sinner's friends. Why don't you just wave that old white flag of surrender? Come down to the altar. Let God save your soul today. You run from the Lord since so far back you can't remember. Let him ease your troubled mind and wash your sins away. Why don't you just wave that old white flag of surrender and come down to the altar? Let God save your soul today. You run from the Lord since so far back. You can't remember Let him ease your troubled mind And wash your sins away Yeah Let him ease your troubled mind And wash your Sins away Let him wash your sins away One, two, can we power? There we go. My name's Tra My name's Trey. I'm from Lake City South. You got it now. <laughs> okay, it's working. My name's Trey. I'm 21 years old. I'm from Lake City, South Carolina, and my life is 
verses. Psalms 23, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. My name's Anthony. I'm from Dayton, Ohio. I'm 55 years old. My life verse is Matthew 5, 16. Let your light shine before men so they may see your good deeds and praise the Father in heaven. Amen. Amen. I'm Lee. I'm from Somerton, South Carolina. And my life verse is in Philippians 4, 13. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Amen. My name's Coleman. I'm 17. I'm from Florence, South Carolina. My life verse is 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, a new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. My name is Cameron. I'm 20 years old. I'm from Wahala, South Carolina. My life verse is Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to accept and test God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Amen. Amen. My name is Asher. I'm 28 from Waterboro, South Carolina, and my life verse is Isaiah 54:17. It's no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and the righteousness is from me, saith the Lord. Amen. My name is Derek. I'm from Conway. I'm 39. My life verse is Psalms 32:1. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, sins are covered. My name's Andrew, I'm 26 years old. I'm from Greer, South Carolina. My life verse is Isaiah 41, nine. I took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners I called you. I said you are my servant, I have chosen you and not rejected you. <clears throat> I'm Brian. I'm from Goose Creek, South Carolina. I'm 35. My life verse is Isaiah 43:2, and it's as I walk through waters, I will be with you. As I walk through, I mean, as I pass through rivers, they will not sweep you over. As I walk through fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you ablaze. Amen. 
So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. I'm not who I used to be. Because I don't have to be the old man inside of me. His day is long dead and gone. Because I've got a new day, a new life. I'm not the same. And I hope that I'll carry me home. I am redeemed. You said. Shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. Since I'm not who I used to be, I am redeemed. You said be free, so I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away. Sam's in the back. Trey, come back here. That's the theme of what God does for us. And as we travel around to various churches, we want to leave a message of help and hope. One of the most disappointing things in my ministry is the phone calls that we get where some mom or some dad or maybe even the person themselves makes that phone call and they're not even sure that there's help on the other end. I get that call that says, I don't know if you can help me, but this is what's going on. I got one of those messages at the back door of a church not too long ago. Two ladies cornered me it was a mom and an aunt. And I felt like that judge in the Bible that says, get a woman what she wants or I ain't going to get no sleep. <laughs> because they began to tell me a real sad story about a son and a nephew that was locked up in the county jail on some very serious charges that looked like life might be over. But how many knows, knows God's in the business of rewriting things? I want you to meet Trey. If you'll put that, there we go. That was the young man they were talking about at the Florence County Detention Center. But that's what he used to be. I want you to meet him tonight. This is Trey. This work. It's good to be here tonight. It's good to see all these people in church. Uh, first off, I just want to thank God for letting me be here because that up there wasn't going on much longer and I wouldn't have been here. And um, I just want to uh, say thank you to all my brothers for lifting me up every day. I couldn't do this without these guys. It's good to see what God's doing in these other ministries. He's alive everywhere. If it wasn't for his blood, we couldn't know him be here right now because we couldn't live without him. But um, my life started up uh, in a church kind of similar to this one. Uh, it's a country church in, uh, over in Nace Lake City where I'm from. Uh, I was coming up in church. I was brought up in church. My mom and daddy had me in church all through my younger years. Um, I had everything I wanted as a child, a good family. Uh, I never wanted for much. I had everything I wanted. That might have been some of my problem, to be the truth. <laughs> but... Uh, I come up, I had a good family, my mama and everything kept me in check, and I was in church all the way up until 14, 13, all of my young uh, years, but all of that changed when 
I kind of gravitated over into uh, ninth grade. I went into high school. I felt like I needed to be somebody I wasn't. And uh, that's something I want to tell all the young. I see a lot of young people in here. Y'all doing it right, right here in church. This is where you got to stay. You got to stay in the Word and in the right, around the right people. But um, I went into high school and I felt like I needed to be somebody I wasn't. I felt like I had to be the, the guy at the party that everybody wanted to be around. I had to have the nicest clothes, the nicest truck. I got my permit and I felt like I had to have the nicest ride. I just had to be the person that everybody looked up to and I was missing the whole point of everything. And uh, I lived that way. I was living that way for a long time. I went into ninth and 10th grade. I ended up getting my driver's license. I started experimenting with stuff. It all started, I want to I wanna tell you all this close. It all, all this, my problem started with cigarettes. Just the smallest things can lead you down a road of destruction. It started with cigarettes. Cigarettes led me to alcohol. Alcohol led me to trying other things. It's, it's all a doorway thing. I ended up smoking marijuana and that opened me up to a whole new door of how to find different types of drugs. I started experimenting with pills, and I loved it. All my friends was doing it, I was doing it, it was okay. I was justifying my actions through what everybody else thought was okay. I was stealing from my parents. I was just making a bad reputation of myself and my, my whole life, I was basically throwing it around the drain. I didn't re I realize this now, I was blind at the time. I thought, I thought this was what I was meant to be. I thought that everything was perfect, but it wasn't. And God had a way of opening my eyes. Um, I was 16. I just got my night license and stuff. Uh, I picked up my best friend. Um, we was on the way to a city from where I'm from. It was Lake City. Some of y'all might know where it's at. But I was on the way there to pick up some drugs for a party. And um, I just picked him up. And we was going down a back road. It was getting dark. And it was drizzling that day. And uh, I ended up running off the road with my best friend in the car. They said I run off the right side of the road, and I, I tried to overcorrect myself and get back on the road. I went into the oncoming lane and hit a car head on. It killed my friend instantly. And the lady that I hit, she died instantly also. I was ejected. They said when they pulled me out, they had to pull me through the windshield of my head. I was laying on the hood. It was a really bad wreck. I, I can't remember anything from it. Yeah, I, was, I woke up the next day with my leg in a full cast, and I had pins keeping my leg together. I broke my femur. Um, and I had to wake up to find out that my friend had passed and all this mess that I was in that I never thought the day before that this could, something like this could happen so easily. And it can. It could happen to anybody. But I ended up recovering from that accident. Uh, I learned how to walk again. I had to do a lot of physical therapy. But while I was doing all of this, they were building a case on me. I ended up getting charged with uh, the death of my best friend and the death of the lady that I got in the wreck with. And I ended up going through a lot of court deal with that for about five years. I ended up going to a prison for a short time. I did a lot of time in county. And all that did was teach me how to be better at what I, you think this was a, you think this would have opened my eyes, it didn't. It, all it did was, it taught me how to be better at what I was already doing. I ended up going into county and going into SCDC and they taught me how to be a better criminal. I ended up getting my court stuff taken care of and they let me, they gave me a chance. They let me out on probation and I got out on probation. I thought I was smart. I thought I was indestructible then. I thought nobody could stop me. If, this, if what I've been through already can't stop me, then nothing can't stop me. God had a way of showing me who's boss, I'll tell you that. I ended up, like I told y'all before I got my wreck, I was experimenting with pills. When I got out of jail, it was no better. I was trying on pills and pills led me to trying heroin and heroin gripped my life in something that so dark a pit that I could not find my way out of I ended up destroying my whole family all my relationships were broken 
my family hated me. I was the person that I couldn't even go home because they didn't want me there because I might come back later and steal something. And I ended up breaking in a family business. Just, it's really hard to talk about because of how close I am now with my family. But I got arrested for breaking in my grandfather's business and I ended up going to jail for that. And this was nine months ago and I thought I got arrested on probation and when I woke up in jail I thought that this is over. I'm about to go do a lot of time and there's nothing that I can do about it. I said I gotta get hard now because it's all over with for me. But I spent some time in county and my mama kept telling me about this place called Teen Challenge and I didn't care. I was just in a trance, just in the days. I didn't care about anything but just getting through the day. And I said, whatever. She said, would you like to talk to Michael, my youth pastor, when I was a child? I said, yeah, tell him, you know, anything to get out the cell a little bit. But he come and saw me at Florence County Detention Center and told me about Pastor Wayne and told me what they were doing in the ministry and how they were helping these guys. My mama told me about what she saw in church. That night she seen Pastor Wayne. She told me about all these guys and what she saw and she said, Trey, I think this could really help you. And I said, you know, whatever, tell him to come. But my youth pastor, um, Michael Kenny, he came and saw me at the county jail and told me about Pastor Wayne and he got me the information to sign up and I signed up. And that's been the best decision I've ever made because I feel like that was God's way of pulling me out of what I was doing to, to make something out of me. And I thank God for it. But Amen. But moving on, I got out of jail and I come to Teen Challenge. It didn't hit me at first, but I saw what God was doing in all my brother's lives. The guy I was first in the room with, his name's Hayden, he's graduated now and he's moved on to better things. But he showed me what God had did in his life since the day he entered the program and when he left. And I said, if God can do that for him, he can do it for me too because he was in the same spot I was. And I see now what I was missing out on because God's doing an amazing work in my life and through my brother's lives and just lifting me up. I just thank him for what he's done and pulled me out of the situation that I've been in. And now I've been here going on eight eight and a half months now. I'm soon to be graduating. I plan on staying on with Pastor Wayne and helping him with whatever he needs. I just enjoy being with this ministry, and I feel like God's called me to do something. Thank you all for listening. Good job. If you ever get in trouble, you need his mama and his aunt. An axle rod, <laughs> or Keen, or whoever those guys are that advertise. Hey, it's good to be here tonight in Macedonia at Victory Baptist Pastors. Thank you for the invitation to come and share. And we want you to know that if you want, if you know somebody that needs help, we've got literature that we're going to have over at the dining hall fellowship area. We'd be glad to talk to you. If you want to talk to these guys and get some more personal information. You encourage us when we go out to places like this. Our job is to encourage you, but you end up encouraging us, and we appreciate it. Thank you, Pastor.